Okay, catheter ablation is one of the treatments we use for heart rhythm problems. It's a local anesthetic procedure usually, but some patients need it doing under general anesthesia. And normally I do these things as either a day case or just a single overnight stay. The patient will come into the cath lab. It takes about an hour to perform the procedure. And essentially we just put two or three small tubes at the top of the leg using ultrasound guidance and pass some thin wires and catheters to the heart. There I use the electrical signals received at the end of those catheters to track down the abnormal areas of atrial tissue, which I can often then go ahead and treat straight away with the ablation treatment. And that's passing energy at the tips of those catheters to the heart and so getting rid of that abnormal tissue causing the patient's problem. We then take the tubes out and uh, put a little stitch at the top of the leg. The patient goes back to the ward and Normally within two or three hours, they're feeling pretty much back to normal. They're a bit sore at the top of the leg and they go home late that day or the following morning. The catheter ablation is actually such a safe, uh, quick and effective treatment. That actually many, many patients who have heart rhythm problems will do uh, best with a catheter ablation. And over the years, as the procedures have uh, improved, we've uh, we've began using them more and more frequently because patients really have such great outcomes in, in general. Uh, patients with atrial fibrillation, particularly uh, atrial fibrillation that comes and goes, that's paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, uh, really respond great to uh, an ablation treatment. And likewise, any patients with SVT or with an atrial flutter treatment. And, uh, you know, really my recommendation for patients with these conditions is to seriously consider uh, an AF ablation or, or an ablation, catheter ablation treatment right up front. So uh, catheter ablation is performed in a specialist lab like the one I'm standing in right now. Uh, we use uh, a combination of x-ray and some complex 3D mapping technology to really locate uh, the catheters in the heart. Uh, some of the procedures such as an, an AF ablation we have quite defined anatomical structures. So parts of the heart that I know performing ablation on, on those will create a very high chance of cure. And in those, those procedures, we tend just to use x-ray and just go for those anatomical sites. Uh, in other types of ablation, for example, atrial tachycardia ablation, I need to really map down the exact spot where things are coming from. And I'll do that using some uh, very complex 3D computer systems that we, that we have uh, available in the, in the hospitals that I, where I work. Yeah, so uh, patients, I hope, can expect a straightforward and safe procedure. Uh, I try to give all my patients a great, uh, great experience, so really minimizing any pain or discomfort either during the procedure or after the procedure. Uh, the vast majority of patients uh, get a great result from their procedure. So a really significant or complete elimination of their symptoms. Uh, but, you know, in some cases, I'm all well, I'm always keen to be safe rather than go, uh, rather than cause a problem. So there are cases where we say, well, actually, to really treat this 100%, we, we've got a risk of causing damage. And in those cases, my personal practice is to stop and have a conversation with a, with, a, with a person who's come to see me. I mean, after all, my patient's safety is my top priority. So the risks of an SVT ablation, uh, so that includes an atrial flutter ablation, thankfully are really small compared to most, uh, most procedures people have done electively. There's a small risk at the top of the leg where we go in um, of bleeding and bruising. Uh, we use ultrasound guidance to minimize that. Likewise, any time we put a catheter into the heart, there's a tiny risk of bleeding around the heart. That's usually treated with a simple little drain, uh, but normally requires at least one a night in hospital. Um, even when that happens, patients are home either the next day or the, uh, the day or two after. And more serious complications, thankfully, are really, really rare. Very occasionally, in some of the ablations, we could just damage the normal conduction system which runs quite close to some of the areas and in those cases sometimes we have to put a pacemaker in thankfully that only happens about one in 200 cases uh, but i'll do my absolute utmost to avoid those and frankly if we're in a situation where i'm worried about that happening i always like to be rather safe than sorry and so normally i would say well actually we won't go ahead with 
a full ablation will just come off the table and we'll discuss the situation. And if it's absolutely necessary, we're all agreed, we could go and do that at a later date. So um, there are risks to any medical procedure and air fibrillation is no exception. I suppose air fibrillation though is really quite safe compared to most elective procedures. But nevertheless, even though 97% of people will say it goes absolutely fine without any problem at all, there's that small number of people who do have a, do have a complication. And the main one there is bleeding, and that's bleeding around the heart. That's because some of the tubes we put into the heart can scratch the surface and cause a bit of bleeding around the heart. Normally, that's really easy to treat with a little tube, just it goes under the diaphragm to drain off any blood collecting around the heart. But very occasionally, patients would need an operation to sew up a little hole in the heart. Thankfully, that's less than really one in 500, but it does happen. Other, other risks or the damage to the heart, uh, you know, either heart attack or stroke, damaging one of the nerves that supplies the di diaphragm. These things can happen. They're rare, but they can, can happen. And uh, you can imagine we do these procedures on people with other diseases as well. And uh, if something goes wrong, patients have even died. However, that's thankfully extremely rare. And uh, yeah, I'll do everything I can in my whole career is really built around making these procedures as safe and as efficient as possible. So the heart can heal. Uh, ablations uh, will do the, uh, do the treatment for the problem, you know, the problem we see in front of us. But one, if we're having to do quite a lot of ablation, for example, in an atrial fibrillation ablation, there can be healing. And in about 25 to 30 percent of cases, patients will need a second, a second procedure to get a great long term result. Some ablations do last forever. In fact, most SVT or atrial flutter ablations will last forever. And many, many patients, the majority of patients who go for an AF ablation will also find that lasts forever for them. I would say, though, that there's that tiny risk of a little bit of atrial fibrillation coming back. And so my patients uh, stay on their blood thinners after an AF ablation if they've got a reason to be on the blood thinner in the first place. So by making a really efficient procedure, I'm pleased to say that my patients normally are up and about within a couple of hours of their procedure. It is a medical procedure, so they will have some soreness at the top of the leg. They can get some soreness in the chest. And as the heart heals, they may get a couple of flutters in their heart over the weeks after their ablation procedure. But that doesn't mean that the procedure hasn't been a success. Um, most patients feel completely back to normal within just a few days. But normally I tell people, well, take it easy for a week uh, before you go back to work. 